Okay, so in this video we're going to do uh, a basics of C-sharp and understanding what references are and outs are in terms of when you pass in something into a function with a ref or an out uh, and the difference. Uh, I was going to do a video on the Wix installer for making an installer, but after spending 52 minutes doing the video we had a power cut and I lost everything and I now don't have time uh, this week unfortunately to redo something that large, so apologies for the short video this week. I'm just very busy with work at the minute and like I say, we, I got up super early to do this video. Uh, I got up at like half past five to do it, spent an hour doing it and right near the end we had a power cut. So I've had to resort to making another quick video. So this will be a basics of C-sharp um, and like I say on the ref and the out uh, variables, which is still going to be useful for people. Uh, so let's get into that. Uh, we'll just create a console app. It doesn't really matter um, what application you create and it will create a new, in this case, just a .NET Core console application. And we will run this just to make sure everything still works. And I think this computer's a little bit slow since it's just had its power cut. Maybe it's trying to uh, recover. Hopefully there's no damage to the hard drive. There we go, it's a little bit faster now. Um, let's do console. Uh, okay, something has gone wrong here. Um, maybe just try restore first. There we go. There we go. Right, console.read line will do, just so it stays open. And then just press F5 to run this. Let's make sure just everything still works. Like I say, the, the computer's on a bit of a go slow at the minute since it's crashed. So again, apologies for that, but um, not much I could do about that. Right, so there's our application. So hello world, we've got a nice console app. Um, so we've done uh, videos on functions, variables, basics of you know, C-sharp. So you, you know how to do things. So let's say we had var, um, add my numbers equals add numbers uh, and then we'll make some variables for it a equals 5 or b equals 7 and you'd pass them into a function so like a b uh, and you'd get the result as add my numbers and then if we make that function so private uh, int add numbers int a int b or so it doesn't look as similar first second and this would return first plus second uh, and then what's it complaining about now oh yeah static because we're in a console app uh, we could then do console dot right line uh, the result of a plus A plus B is, and then add my numbers. It's a really bad variable name. Let's rename that to result. And this should output the result of five plus seven. Uh, why, oh, that's after the read line. Let's move that read line to the bottom. And I've also changed keyboards, so I keep hitting the wrong keys at the minute. Right, so there we go. So you've got the result of 5 plus 7 is 12, which is fine. Um, so that's a basic you know, a method, a function that we pass variables into and we get a result. Um, but the situations where uh, you want to alter the variables itself. So maybe you, you have a variable result and you want it to actually be set here. Uh, so instead of doing that, you would want to do, say, a, B, and result. And then this is expected to have a result. Um, and then instead of returning, you'd actually say result equals first plus second. And if we put a breakpoint in there, when we run, uh, okay, no longer we've got a return value. When we run this, you'll see that the result is indeed 12 here that we've passed in. And then we come out, uh, and the result is zero outside of here. Um, so you've got the result as, as nothing, it hasn't been set. 
so this might confuse some people that are for, you know new into to programming and thinking, well, I've given it the result and it's set the result, so why is it not changed? Um, and the answer lies in the fact that when you're passing things around in C Sharp, um, that you pass them, um, certain things pass as as references, which by that we mean a reference to the actual object itself. So if we passed in result, it would be the actual object by default on some things, such as classes. Um, and then other things go as copies. So all things like um, integers, uh, strings, all basic stuff, booleans, characters, they always go as a copy. So even though when you go into here, you pass these in, this function can in no way manipulate these values. These are simply copies when they go in. Um, so in order to change that default behavior, if you put a keyword ref before the, the value, it will get passed in as a reference. But the function also needs to know that it's expecting a reference. So you put the same thing in the function. And now by doing this at the front of each, if we run it again, you'll see that it's now, it's edited this actual value. So if we put a breakpoint here where we did before, you can see that result is 12. And when we come out, this new result is 12. It's edited this exact instance. So it's sent a, effectively uh, a direct, this value straight in, not as a copy. It hasn't cloned it and copied it in. Um, and that's the point of ref. And that's, you use it wherever you want that kind of behavior, where you expect the actual value to be edited. Um, there's one other that's an out, exactly the same as ref, but the only difference with out is if the value decided to, well, let's jump back a sec. If it's reference, it simply means you're giving it a reference to that object, but you're in no way expecting it to always be changed. So it might decide that it's not going to do that. So this function might just simply do nothing. It might be a blank function. And it's quite happy being a blank function, and then result doesn't change. Um, if we change this to out, we're basically making a statement that we are expecting that this value is always going to be set. Um, and that's typically used with when you don't set um, the value either. So if you've had, say, an int result, you define it, you declare it, um, or rather you define it, but you don't declare it. So you define a variable here, int, but it's never been set. It's 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 unset, it's undefined. Or well, I never remember which way around, undefined, undeclared, whichever. So you haven't basically given it a value. So you'd usually use an out when you're expecting it to always be set. Um, and a good example of that is, um, like if you're expecting it to attempt to convert a value uh, and you're expecting the result to be say true or false. So you might have a Boolean um, that you're expecting to be, if is that true or false? So you might say, uh, this might be, is uh, A is larger. And this should basically then say, return if first is greater than second. Um, or rather not return, uh, set the result of whether the first is greater than the second. Uh, but if if this decided to never bother setting it, like here, then we couldn't be guaranteed that uh, the result has actually changed. So we can't be guaranteed that this is definitely true or false. It could still be unset, or it could still be if we were reusing the same variable and it's set to true in the last one, and we do is A larger than B, and then it simply goes, oh, I'm not going to bother setting it. It could be like, you know, if uh, first is less than three, uh, we're just not going to do anything. Otherwise, we're going to set the result. Um, and then it's going to complain that the out parameter result must be assigned to. You, you've got to assign it because that's the point of out. So like ref, it's still a reference, uh, but it's also explicitly stating that this function must set it. So once we've called this function, and it's passed in as out, we can be guaranteed that this function has changed our value. So it doesn't matter what the default value is going in, it will always be um, you know, set. So that's the point of out. Uh, where you'll see things like that, I believe, is like int.tryparse, maybe? Yeah, uh, and it uses exactly that. So int.tryparse um, e, which would fail. Um, and we could do out int result. Um, and that would then, this result will guaranteed to be always set. Uh, so I think I've typed result too many times because that just doesn't look spelled correctly anymore. Um, so if we did say Boolean result equals true, and we passed in as an out to the try pass, which we know will fail, um, 
then integer. Oh yeah, sorry, the result is the integer itself in this case. So if we said, we've got this variable result as one, and we try to parse it, the int.try parse will always have to set um, the, the value. So even though the result is one, and we know this will fail because E isn't a number. So result right now is one, even though that failed, it's reset result to zero. So we can be guaranteed that it's it's set that value and also try pass will have returned false. So we know that the result, even though it's zero, isn't the correct value. Um, so that's all there is to refs and outs that the basically you're passing a, a direct link to the object itself, not a copy. Um, and then where that changes, uh, where it's it's slightly different, it's basically just in the default of um, what's been passed in. So as I mentioned, certain things um, get passed in automatically as a reference, if you will. Um, and one of those is a class. So if we made a new class, so a class, uh, a value, and we then did a class equals new a class, and then we passed in um, a and a class and we're basically wanting um add numbers is not the right name anymore but it doesn't matter um we will change first to that second value to the class itself and then here we're going to say second dot a value equals first change that to an int so now we're doing the same thing as before um don't need the output anymore where we're passing in two variables like we did at the start, but this time it's an integer, but then a class. And then inside of here, the class isn't passed as a reference or an out, and we're setting a value. So if we step over the code this time, what we'll see is, so right now a class has a value of zero, and we're passing in five. We go into here, it's gonna set the value of the class internal value to five, and when we come out, a class dot value is five. So what's happened there is the class has actually been passed as a reference by default. So you don't make a copy of the class when you pass it around. So unlike strings and integers and things, classes will naturally be references. So that's what you have to also bear in mind that if you're expecting to pass in a class like this, and, and for this to not really set the real class and you're thinking it's a copy, that's not the default behavior. Um, so that's, that's again a, a change in simply the default state. Um, if you want to uh, get a class, you know, a copy of a class, which is not what I recommend, um, then you can do, um, I can't even think because I never do it. Uh, there's a clone, which is actually not appearing on here, but I'm sure there's like a, a you can do a member wise clone. Um, but again, it's not typically uh, what you'd do. Um, have a quick look. Uh, you can do basically like a, a light copy of a class or you can do like a deep copy where you copy in a links. Um, so you, you'd copy, if you were doing like a soft copy, let's do it manually say, you'd do a copy and, and the way you copy the class is make a new class and then inside the class you'd copy a value equals a class dot uh, a value. And you'd, you know, you'd copy each value individually and you pass in a copy. Um, but then if the inner value was a class, uh, you know, a different class, then this would still be a reference. So you've got sort of a light copy and then a deep copy, uh, you know, and it depends how far you want to go down copying the references. But f for that reason alone, I, I very rarely, in fact, almost I don't think I ever, ever copy a class. There's, well, there's, there's the very odd occasion where I clone classes. Um, but that's, again, not not really recommended. Just simply the way you work with your code is you, you expect it to be, you know, that way if you're passing a class in, you are going to expect that the function can edit the class. You know, it can change the values directly inside the class. Um, so, uh, again, this bit might be obvious, but just to um, show it, if you passed in... A value of a class so that would now be an integer um, then what do you think would happen here 
if we do second equals first and we've passed in a value on the class and see if you guess right. So the value of the class is zero. It should get set to five and the value of the class is still zero. So all that's happened there might be obvious to some of you and you might have expected that to be a reference yourselves, um, but that is uh, an integer. So we basically made a copy of that integer. So that's really all there is to um, reference and outs. Uh, if you have any other questions or it doesn't make sense, let me know. And again, just sorry about the short video this week, uh, but unfortunately I just had a power cut and didn't have time for, uh, you know, do any more. I'll try and get another video out at the weekend. Uh, but again, I am very busy, uh, but I'll try and get up early tomorrow and redo the, the installer video. But uh, hopefully this video's still been useful uh, to some of you. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank mm -hmm. you.